Let me give an overview of and an introduction to this particular lab for measurements. And what I'm going to do here, to sort of preview the video, is I'm going to um, I'm actually going to you know talk about each figure and start filling in this front part. This isn't really part of the grade, just sort of give you an idea of kind of how to do measurements, really. Um, and then I will go through, I won't answer these questions in the report sheet. Uh, this is what you need to fill out and you'll be using videos and some images and I'll show that uh, later. And, um, and it goes on for like, Part E and three parts to Part E. So there's there's a decent amount of data that you collect, and again, you'll be using images and video for that, and actually some of the data I'm just giving you. And then on this last section on questions, just know that this part, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that um, this is going to be like a plus 10% uh, bonus if you do this part. Since for this summer section, since it's all online and there's so much Master in Chemistry, okay, I'm going to push the grade part there. All right. So if you do this, I'll give you a plus 10% bonus points. And it's doing the same thing that you're doing for the Chapter 2 Master in Chemistry assignments. You know, significant figures, scientific notation, some conversions, actually a lot of conversions, and then a few little word problems uh, as well. Okay, so let's go back up top here and talk about this lab. And we're wanting you to get some, to be become familiar with using the balance, making measurements with a meter stick or a graduated cylinder. Okay, so let's just see some of the aspects of that. Um, the sequence of uh, measurements here uh, do not, um, does not completely follow the sequence in the report sheet, but that's okay. All right, so first let's talk about uh, measuring the volume in a graduated cylinder. And what happens, there's attractive forces between the water molecules and the glass molecules at the surface. It actually causes it to rise up on the, on the, on the ends here. We refer to that as a, as a meniscus, so this curvature that the water takes. And you'll see these in the images that I've taken for you. Um, and what you do is, well, there's a couple things. One... You always want to read the meniscus from the bottom part, or re, I should say, read the volume from the bottom part of the meniscus. Okay, so as you're sort of sitting the eyeball there. And then the other aspect here is, notice what the graduated cylinder is, is telling us. So what I'm seeing here is this, this is a the sort of the max volume for uh, this graduated cylinder would be about 50 milliliters, okay? And this particular volume that's in here, um, you know, for reading these different marks, you've got to interpret it correctly. So let me just put a little bit of information here. All right. And so what, you're, what we're seeing is that uh, the, the big lines go up in five milliliter increments, and then the smaller lines go up in one milliliter increments. You can see uh, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and then 40. And our meniscus is falling somewhere in between these two lines here. So let's just sort of mark off these two lines. This would be 36. This top one is 37 milliliters. And what we can see is and at least what I'm seeing is it looks like the meniscus, this dotted line that they're putting in the lab manual, I don't know, it's either right in the middle or it looks to me like it's just a little bit above me, the middle of the, between the two marks. What that means is we can actually estimate the next digit. Okay, so again, like these volume measurements are certain because we have marks indicating those volumes. And then the next digit down, it would be right the tenth position. Uh, that would be the uh, estimated digit. So I would call the volume here uh, somewhere around 36, let's say 36.6 milliliters. I think 36.5 milliliters would be also correct. There's, you know, if, if this is estimated, which it is, based on its, well, relative position between the two known volume marks, um, then there's always a little bit of error in that measurement. It's fine. Now, this would not be 36.9. 
or 36.1, I can clearly tell that it's not just above that line or just below that line. Right? It's somewhere close to the middle. And you do that for all volume measurements. Okay, now I have a little bit to say about a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder in a few minutes, uh, but for right now, we're gonna move on. Oh, and let's see, let's just start filling in this information. So the smallest marks on this on this particular graduated cylinder is, is every uh, one uh, milliliter. Uh, actually, I'll give the unit there, that's fine. And then um, it's telling you, go one digit beyond, that's that estimated value. And what I say, that said, this was a 36.6 milliliters there. And that's kind of how you fill out a report sheet. You, know, you start filling in these blanks, and then you a lot of times you use that information for other things. Okay, so now we have the uh, measurement of length, and we're going to use a meter stick for that. Okay, so we're not going to use feet or inches in the lab. We're going to use centimeters or millimeters, <laughs> depending on the... Uh, the um, what's being asked for actually in the report sheet. Now, this is just, let's say, a, just a small portion of a meter stick, if you will. And what we're seeing is where it's marked off in individual centimeters here, okay? Now, one thing we learn about with the metric system, and honestly, you'll, you'll need to watch the lecture videos uh, for the full introduction to the metric system, okay? And it's honestly best that you watch that before completing this lab, in my opinion. And what you'll see there, and what I'll talk about here, is that uh, you know every you know one centimeter uh, that we have on a meter stick is divided into ten equal sections, and each one of those is referred to as it would be the well, we'll just spell it out. That's a that's a millimeter, okay or the abbreviation is little m, a little m for a milliliter, millimeter, sorry. Um, and then just to give you a few conversion factors, again, this is talked about in those videos, um, and you'll actually be doing some of this in the report sheet. So I'm basically giving you a few answers. I'll let you decide where it goes in the report sheet. But if you look at a full millimeter a meter stick, which there's a video describing the meter stick, what you'll see is that there are exactly 1,000 millimeters in one meter, and there are 100 centimeters in one meter. So basically we've taken a meter stick and we've divided it into 100 equal sections, and that's what we call, you know, this guy, this you know, centimeter that we have here. If we take that meter stick and divide it into 1,000 equal segments, then we have a millimeter, all right? Now, in the context of this measurement here, um, we have a nail. And one thing I've done here is I've added this little horizontal line just so we can see this more easily. And um, notice what's happening. It's something similar to what we saw up here with the meniscus. Right? The meniscus fell somewhere in between the two marks on the graduate cylinder, and then we estimated that next one down. And we're going to do the same thing for this particular exercise in I'll say more about that in a practical sense in a few minutes. But just looking at this information, and we want to we want to write it out in centimeters here. So right, three, this is uh, 3.5 centimeters. And what we see, you know, point, um, uh, 6.7, it's a little bit above 0.7. It's not halfway in between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8, just a little bit above. And I'm going to call this... Um, 3.72 millimeters is the total distance for this um, uh, nail here. Okay, so, and then just to fill in the, the charts here, let's see what it's asking for. Well, actually, let's just take there this. Uh, what's the length of the nail? It's just what I did there. 3.72. And then what does the smallest lines represent? Well, we just, that's, that's a millimeter, okay? All right. Now, this is kind of an idealized teaching example, okay? In the real world, in my opinion, it is very difficult to see how far between individual uh, millimeter marks you are on a typical meter stick, okay? So usually, uh, and actually not usually, always, 
I am okay if you don't estimate that next digit down when you're doing the experiment in part A, okay? And again, I'll repeat that when we get to that section of the, the lab, okay? Um, the marks on the meter stick are sort of fat. Um, they're not real sharp, and um, they're so small. If, if they're really sharp marks, you could probably do it. Like here, it's, again, sort of idealized, sort of zoomed in, and, and it's easy to see, you know, kind of where it falls. In a practical sense, in the laboratory, especially with our meter sticks, your typical meter stick is a little more challenging, okay? So just taking it to a millimeter is totally fine. And then the balances that we have in the laboratory, well, there we go, they're all digital, okay? So meaning that they're not analog. Right? These up here, this, this would be like an analog system <laughs> uh, where you're estimating the next digit down. Here, no, it's not analog. And so what you do is that um, it's kind of easy, right? The numbers are just spelled out for you and these things are calibrated to where that last digit is still the estimated digit, you would just have to look on the little plaque on the balance to know, you know, what's the error of that value. You know, usually like plus or minus one or two of that unit there. And then when you record the mass of this object, you don't stop here. You actually record whatever is given on the um, um, digital balance readout. When I grade this lab, that's one of the things I'll be looking for. Did you apply the proper measurement technique uh, when you record the mass or volume or temperature, whatever? All right. And now we come to the lab. And so uh, let's switch views a little bit and so we can better compare the two, uh, the well, the report sheet portion here and then the actual uh, lab data portion if you will okay okay so here on the left hand side this is our uh, report sheet we were just looking at this is what you purchased the lab manual that you purchased from the bookstore um, and this is what you'll fill out and then what you'll find on Moodle uh, is this it'll it's a link to this PDF okay and so the PDF what I've tried to do here is um, well, you, hopefully you can kind of see, um, I've tried to, you know, sort of uh, replicate, you know, part A, part B, kind of in the same language that's in the report sheet over here. And um, either you're going to have a video or some um, image that you're going to look at, okay? And let's just sort of scroll down right here. There's our volume measurements for part B. Let's look over here. Yeah, there we go. And I'm gonna to try to keep from cutting that top off here. It's a little bit challenging to get these exactly lined up. Um, and um, yeah, like kind of what I just did in the intro. What's the total volume of this particular graduate cylinder? What's the smallest values and adjacent marks here? And then the volume of the test tube, then what you'll do is you'll use this image to read off the volume. Now, the images are decent, I think, but I did go ahead, especially where needed, and I put in different colored marks just to show you, like in this case, where are the marks of the graduate cylinder? versus what's the bottom of the meniscus. So you can better estimate that last digit, okay? Now, honestly, um, uh, this one here, uh, just do your best in terms of estimating the uh, last digit, just because you know each mark is about 0.2 milli milliliters. And so if you go to the tenth position here, totally fine for the 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, and that's fairly typical, okay? Um, and actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Hang on, let's go back for a minute and take a look at the, the first part here. And um, again, a, a lot of this I've already talked about. It's also in the video. Um, you can just look up the information. This video here, though, does give you, it goes to a YouTube link, and it does give you a description of the meter stick, okay? And then for the data down here, 
about the length of a piece of paper in centimeters and inches? Well, I've taken a picture of the, uh, the one for the centimeter here. And notice, just uh, go to the uh, tenth position, go to the millimeter uh, unit. Again, the, the marks on the millimeter side of things is really kind of fat. It's hard to tell exactly where it's falling in the middle. Um, so just go to the millimeter for uh, this uh, accuracy. So what we'll do for the um, inches value, I just gave you the value. So just use 11.0 inches for the measurement here. So there we go. Just go ahead and fill uh, that in there. And what you're going to do here is that you're going to take the two measurements and you are going to do a little bit of math to create a conversion factor between one inch and a certain number of centimeters, okay? And just sort of follow the directions here. Uh, calculate the number of centimeters by one inch by dividing the number of centimeters by the number of inches, okay? So and what they're talking about here is are these two values. Okay, so uh, for, for this, again, dividing uh, portion, just do what it says. Uh, the number of centimeters by the number of of inches and so 11.0 inches on the bottom and then whatever you know number you measure this at here on that meter stick and when you do that that number is going to give you or that calculation is going to give you that number and and what it's doing here it's just it's giving you a conversion factor between the distance of one inch versus what is the equivalent amount in centimeters, okay? And you can look at that up. I mean, that's just known quantity. You can take a look at it to see how close you got with that. Uh, I've already talked about the volume measurement. Uh, mass measurement, let's just take a peek at it. And it's just a video, okay? So there's no data here. And all it is, I mean, a lot of these are just real short little videos of how to proper way to use the balance in terms of closing the doors, zeroing out the balance, that kind of thing. And then when you watch these videos, you know, if you're recording, like here, you're going to be rec recording uh, two masses. You're going to record those two values. And then you're going to subtract these two values to get then the mass of the marble chips in the video. OK, so you're going to record these two values directly from the video. So you can pause the video, record the value and then continue playing it. All right. Some of these I've just like in this video, I think I've just done pop up windows, giving you some information. Other ones are more like movies, you know, where I'm actually talking about the experiment as I do it. And then in some of these videos that you'll see for the semester, it'll just be like a voice, a voiceover, like a voice narration. Okay. Temperature of, of uh, temperature of the room that day. <laughs> that day in the lab, the air conditioning was not doing too well, so it's pretty warm. So it's thirty something. And notice that uh, right here's the alcohol uh, measurement part portion of the uh, thermometer, and it is falling somewhere in between thirty and thirty one degrees Celsius here. So here, this is the analog system. You want to estimate the tenth position on that measurement. And then there are calculations, there's formulas that allow you to calculate those other uh, other values. Okay. Density of water, that's just a video. And again, same kind of thing, you know, there's a few pieces of data. You're going to collect that data from the video, you're going to collect that data, and you're going to collect that data from the video. So for each one of those, you want to pause and write it down. Okay, and I've done a little voice narration on that one. And at the end of that video, uh, since you're measuring the volume of the water, then what, what I've done is I've marked up the video image like sort of like this to where you can see the lines and the meniscus a little bit better. Uh, density of irregular shape object. And basically, I mean, what I did here, all I did is I followed the procedure in the lab manual and this sort of took pictures of the different parts. Now, it's a little bit out of order, you know, don't be bothered by that too much. I, I found a, a bolt <laughs> in the laboratory and I just used it as a as a, a prop for this, as my irregular uh, solid. 
So the mass, right, this is the digital value, and you're just going to record all the numbers that you see there. Okay? So this is how we're doing labs for this online uh, uh, class. And then the volume of water, well, what you're doing here is uh, this would be the, the volume of water and then the volume of water plus object. And uh, yeah, that would be the final volume. So let me do, um, this is uh, the initial volume. And then this is the final volume in terms of what you see here with the measurement. And you can see that the volume has jumped up a small amount, like a, maybe a little bit more than, yeah, a little bit more than a milliliter or so. And then, you know, what you're doing in this last section, you're calculating density. Again, you really need to watch the videos for chapter two before doing this lab, in my opinion. I'll give you a little bit, you know, the density formula is mass divided by volume, okay? Um, and, and so, I mean, what are we doing? Well, we, we're looking for mass, we're looking for volume. The mass is just given to you, basically, on the balance. And then the volume, what you do is you're gonna subtract these two values, and then that will give you, there we go, the volume of the object. And then you just plug in these two, it'll be what? 11.3191 divided by this number, then we'll give you the density. Okay? And the idea is that we would like to see, I would like to see the calculations here. Because okay? what you do is you'll you'll fill this out by hand is really the best way to do it. You have a, should have a printed copy because you bought it from the, the, the bookstore. Uh, and then you'll, um, you can take images or scan a PDF and then just upload uh, your written lab report uh, through a link on Moodle, right? and then I'll grade it and I can give you feedback that way as well. And then the last one here is the density of the solid. Now, let's, let's take a look. There's just three images here, and uh, I've tried to zoom in on them the best I can, okay, without getting too blurry. And um, the uh, let's just take a look at a few things here. Okay, so the uh, the metal cylinder, there it is, it's a piece of copper, okay, and uh, it has a, this is the, well, this is the height of the uh, metal cylinder, so let me, let me try to, I, I can't draw on this part very easily, so there's my metal, metal, metal cylinder there, and the uh, height of the metal cylinder is here, okay, so that's this, distance and then uh, and th that's that portion and it's uh, that portion and then the uh, diameter notice you're doing the diameter and the radius and the diameter is that distance the full distance on the uh, uh, width of the cylinder it's just above one centimeter or so and notice that is what it's wanting and then let me just redraw a circle here like you're looking on end and the, the diameter is that full distance, and the radius is that, okay? So the radius is equal to the diameter divided by two, and that's your value there, and that's what you actually use in your volume calculation. So when calculating the volume of the cylinder, you actually use that formula right there, where pi is equal to 3.14. And you got to, everyone has a pi button on their calculator. They'll give you more digits than, than just uh, the three digits there. And the same thing as before. You know, once you have your volume, that's, uh, here we go. All right, if I want to do the density, I need mass divided by volume. Okay, well, where's the mass? The mass is right there. Okay? It's just an image. So you're not getting your hands-on experience in this lab. We're doing the best we can for the online environment. And... Um, Honestly, I mean, working a balance isn't that hard. And so when you actually do get a different chemistry lab, if you if you take more chemistry classes, you'll get experience with that. Um, you know, you're missing out on some of the handling of the glassware, but, you know, we again, we're doing the best we can. And really, one thing that's really important, it, it, the way this is set up, it does give you good practice at doing the proper measurement uh, techniques, which honestly, 
in the, my face-to-face -face labs, uh, that, that portion is some of the more uh, challenging aspects of the, 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 the labs. It's just, how do I read the exact, the accurate uh, volume there? Okay, I think that's enough. Um, I will save these notes, okay, and just sort of post it as a, as a, a PDF link for you so you can see these. And um, that's it. Thanks.